Hey everybody, I'm going to do a quick painting of this little gnome. It's a gay pride gnome. And so the first thing I'm going to do, as you can see, I've already got it on the canvas or on the piece of wood. And here's my little rendering I did in Procreate. If y'all can see that. So that's what I'm gonna be doing. Kidoke. And so a lot of people worry that they don't have a lot, you know, a lot of the uh, correct colors. I'm just using a dark blue and I'm making it a lighter blue instead of having to locate some lighter blue paint. And I am painting with a large round brush. I think this is probably a 12. And then I have a small, smaller brush to just do some cleanup um, if I need to do cleanup work which I always need to do cleanup work so what I do is I'll take this wood and I prep it I sand it and prep it and then what I do is I spray paint it black and then I come back and I paint it with a thin layer of just whatever black I have um, and that way when I have touch-ups if I have to touch up anything around the edges it is the same shade of black so that's a little secret to doing that if you want a black canvas so the nice thing of being at Chiba Hut is you're gonna be able to get you some dinner and um, hang out for a while and um, They've got a lot of good stuff going on next week for Pride Week. And uh, so because I've already painted the, the canvas, it's going to be a pretty quick to get the main um, paint on here. But then you'll, you'll be able to spend some time, you know, really detailing it out. And I'll show you some fun little things we can do around the edges of it to make it a lot of fun. So it doesn't use much paint. Like the majority of the paint I put on my palette is going to go to waste and paint it around the nose. I'm going to make my lines a little thicker. And then I'm going to skip up here and do another one just so I don't have to keep cleaning my brush. And because I have this black in between, I mean a black, black background already, I'm just going to leave a little gap so it looks like it's been outlined. And I'll probably have to come in and touch that up anyway, but still, I like, I like how it looks. I was thinking that was the red. Let's see, I have a red paint pen. Let's see how this looks. Because it's wood, it does have a little um, bleed right here because it's not like smooth like canvas. It's kind of like fraying a little bit at the end, but not real bad. See how it kind of frayed a little bit right there? And then red, then I'm going to go to a pinkish color, pink purpley. Very cute. These are very, very cute. These little stripes. And then I'm going to do the green color. Light blue, then green. I kind of didn't leave myself enough room right there. I mean, I gave myself too much room right here. That's okay. That's okay. We'll just... Watch it right here. 
and I'm a I'm always going in and cleaning up so um, I, I feel like all my designs I paint look a little rough until I put that last little bit on it so I'm just do a little bit of a second coat right here real quick and then I do that purple I mean that pink beard because that beard is so sneaking cute so we're gonna do a pink beard and you can see this really isn't taking forever but it's all the extra stuff we do at the end that makes it all come together and just look really adorable so I like I like whimsical styled stuff I mean if any of y'all have come to any of my classes or anything or know me at all you know my um, my degrees in painting and drawing and then my master's is in art history so I, I love medieval renaissance style art that's kind of the the genre that I'm most attracted to as far as fine art world goes um, but I do love whimsical style which really isn't a um, I don't know if it's a style of art but I mean it's not like pop art or anything like that it's just a I just like things that are kind of whimsical done painted real whimsic whimsically that's the right terminology anyway so that's the style I like to paint stuff in just really cute and um and kind of pop arty but the style I'm most you know would want to decorate my home with is uh, I just I love you know medieval and renaissance early renaissance um style art so it's kind of a kind of have a conundrum going on there with my art styles but as far as fine art goes I'm a medievalist and as far as um, painting wise goes I'm more pop arty so anyway okay so let me mix up a little bit I'm just gonna take a little of this pink and a little of the white and mix kind of a little fleshy color adding a little of that yellow in there a little yellow a little pink a little yellow a little pink and a little white kind of give me this kind of orangey fleshy tone so that's what I'm gonna make for the news and so some of this you have to go over twice just because it's um, you're painting on black but we're gonna try to um, hopefully not have to go over it too many times and um, I need to pull my heat prep, heat gun out so I can so I can dry this off but you don't really want to make it thicker just so you don't have to paint it more than once because it just takes forever for it to dry and uh, just not the best choice you 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 always do want to do um, thin layers rather than one thick layer and look I'm a I fall to it too I got a big glob up here but um, these, this is coming out really cute. It's going to dry, and I can do another coat, and I can outline some of this stuff. So we need to decide, does this thing have shoes on, or is he barefoot? So I'm thinking we need some shoes, but what color should the shoes be on this? I'm kind of thinking a um, yellow, maybe yellow. Because obviously I'm not trying to match anything here. So let's do some little yellow shoes and see how that looks. These are cute. Cute, cute, cute. Cute, cute, cute. Alrighty. Let's see if I need to do another little coat right there, that yellow. And for like these big fat bulbous noses, you can put like a little lighter stripe down the, you know, a little lighter curve down the side to look like it's highlighted by the light. So like this, I could do like, 
a little lighter around the edge. A little lighter right here around this edge. A little lighter right here around that edge. I'm doing all that feet. How cute is that? Coming along, coming along. At the very end, I'm gonna put the stars on here. And now on the other one, I have in his little beard, he has stars. So I may, um, I may put their white stars on the little drawing. So I may make them white. I may make them a different color. But let me draw this again. I'm gonna do a little bit more. Okay, so one thing I want to see is I do have some paint pens here, and there is a white. So I am kind of interested to see what it would look like if I tried to outline this with white in between each color. You hear how this, you hear it? And that's just a little You think about the white line I'm gonna do I wish this was a fatter marker let's see sometimes I just would rather paint it with a paintbrush so let's see how this works with the paintbrush Well, that's kind of coming together. That does look cute. Look how cute that looks. Alrighty. So I'm only using the... Um, the white on that part. I'm not going to outline down here white, but I am going to color in this heart white just so it can um, be easier to paint another color. So I think in the my little sample I did this kind of rainbow striped. I haven't decided if I'm going to do it rainbow or not on this one. I got the little heart painted. So I do have a black paint pen that I can use. I've got several black paint pens around here. See how clean that came out right there? The paint pen glides so smooth over dried paint. So if your if your paint's not dry, it's not going to slide good. And if you're painting just on the bare wood with the paint pen, it's not going to glide that good. You can kind of see how it's a little choppy down there. I don't like that, but it's not supposed to look like it's mass produced. So. Now, if you go over wet paint, you will mess up your tip of your paint pen. So, don't do that. So, 
So anyway, I know this is kind of boring just sitting here watching somebody paint. So I hope everybody's having a good, good summer so far, getting ready for vacations and everything like that. This would be so fun to paint outside on the beach. Usually when I go to the beach with my friend, I um, bring my sketchbook with me and I can sit out there and entertain myself. Okay, so the nose is dry, so let's go back over the nose. And you know, you can also use um, a permanent marker like a Sharpie. So I could actually use the Sharpie to go Sharpie's actually smoother. It feels, it glides so much better than the paint pen, to be honest with you. And so in the Pop Art Your Pet class, we use Sharpies. We do not use paint pens. Look how cute. I think the Sharpie looks so much better than this paint pen, to be honest with you. Let's clean up the edges with this. So now I'm going to have to go over this. So let me think about how this is going to look. Just gonna clean up the edges here. I may actually come back over with my paintbrush. But you see how I'm, I'm you can see how it's see how these are all jagged right here? And I'm just coming along the edge with this Sharpie and cleaning that edge up. See that? Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Okay, so now we've got our little gnome. We do not have the heart painted yet. It's still drying. Um, let's see if I can use shoot it with the heat gun. Keep dope. I'm going to use this paint pen, and I'm going to draw a star up here. Paint pen is not cooperating. You know what? I'm going to use my paintbrush. It's okay if it's a little, not as teeny tiny. Is that first wanted? That's okay. Ooh, I almost need to pull my glasses out. Like, that looks cute. That's fine. You don't want to water your paint down too much. Even though it does make it easier to glide, it also will make it bleed if, if you have um, wet paint on here. Wet background, I mean. That one's a little too wet right there, but it'll dry. Okay, so for the for the heart, do I want to do it? I'm going to do just a kind of a really large Use, uh, do the rainbow, but do it. Oops, making a mess already. It's a little too watery right there.
Okay, I'm gonna let that dry. And then clean it up. That is not, it's a little too watery. Alrighty, so we've got, so today, I just have to tell y'all, I um, ordered some stickers that are of Sassy, and they say Sassy Artist, and it's a cute little picture of Sassy that I sketched out, and um, actually, I can show y'all what it looks like, because I have my iPad right here. Whoops. That's going to be our little sticker. How cute is that? My sassy sticker. So here's our little gnome. He's coming along really cute. Really cute. So now I want to add some accents around the edge. So I'm going to use the pink. I really like this pink color. Maybe I'll do some green. But I'm going to take this pink color and I'm going to put right along the edge here, I'm going to put a line. And then a dot, and a dot, and then a line. And this does not have to be um, straight, perfect. This is supposed to look whimsical and painterly. And I just, I think this is so much fun. I love doing this, this kind of a little accent around the edge. And so you can do whatever colors you want. So this is what I got so far, right? So I'm going to do a dot here. Maybe I'll just do one line here. And I may or may not have to go over this. I'm hoping I don't, but I might. And that's okay. And this is something I thought the paint pens would be fun for, but um, now I'm thinking the paint pens are just going to be too splintery it's just gonna like you know make you have to clean it up a lot because it's gonna have you know the color fraying and stuff like that splatting and so what I'll do is I'll what I'll do is I'll probably put another color next to this So I'll probably put maybe the green. The green is so cute. I love that that bright green. So here's my little whimsical border. Not cute. So now what I can do is I can paint the edges of this and then stripe it. So that's gonna be really pretty. So I can do whatever color I wanna paint my edges. Um, I do have some blue sitting right here, so I might just paint the edges blue right here. Just paint the edges blue, um, cause I'm too lazy to go get the black paint. And um, let's see how that looks. Oh yeah, the blue's gonna look pretty. And then I can put stripes You can paint stripes down it too. So, um, so this is for a gay pride, and um, so for the workshop, you can either do the bearded gnome or the pigtailed gnome. And so the pigtailed gnome. Let me paint this one little side, and I'll show you what the pigtailed gnome drawing looks like. So here's the drawing for the pigtailed gnome. How cute is that? She's got little sunglasses on her head. And she's got the peace sign 
So she's going to be cute. So you can take your pick. When you register, you can pick which one you want. Um, doesn't really matter to me because the night of the event, um, we're not putting the images on there until you get there. So you can change your mind if you want. Um, and because we do have some paint pens that are going to be handy, you're going to be able to personalize if you want to put names or anything like that on there also. So... Um, it should be a lot of fun. If you've never been to Chiba Hut yet, what are you waiting for? The food is awesome. Um, they've got some really good sandwiches. Any sandwich you can make a um, any sandwich you can make a salad. So um, that's going to be that's something if you you know if you feel like I can't eat sandwiches, I'm trying to not eat bread. You can make any of their sandwiches a salad. They even have a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Now, I don't know how you'd make that a sa salad, but I have heard that they, somebody did it before, so <laughs> that'd be kind of interesting to try a peanut butter and jelly salad. Um, and hopefully these will be up at Chiba Hut in the next day or two. I need to bring it out there to um, Meredith over there so she can use them as a sample. But anyway, so you can see this is not going to be that long of a workshop. The um, um, I'm all about long workshops, but this one, you know, it depends on how fast of a painter you are. You can you can get in and out there and have your meal and not not have an issue with it, or you can um, or you can take your time. So we got a couple people registered already, even though I screwed up the date. And um, so looks really pretty on me, really pretty colors on me. And now I've just made it a bigger mess and got it over both my hands. And both my hands so great. This is the gnome, the the uh, bearded gnome, and this is going to be the um, pigtailed gnome is what I'm calling it. So I'm going to put this one aside to dry a little bit. Plastic bag sitting over here. And then I'm going to show you. I have this piece of wood. It's got some little gradus on it. Okay, so this is how I put it on the canvas. I have this, and it's just a little 8.5 by 11 sheet of transfer paper okay and so then I take my little gnome drawing that I drew it on my iPad so then I just sent it to print try to figure out where the center of this is going to be about like that I'm thinking and um, I can totally change if I don't like that how I did the hat and this is cool this little stylus came with this tracing paper so you just go over it, and I love doing using the stylus much more than using a pen because that tends to poke a hole into your paper. This way I can use the same drawing for multiple people, and I know people say, well, you can't see what you've already traced over. Well, if you're using the same thing multiple times, you can't really tell then either. And we got these cute little sunglasses. How cute are they? And then just go all the way around and all the way around. And then, ta-da, isn't that awesome? It looks so good doing it with this um, white. I mean, it's like, it looks so much better than when you do it with the dark. But look how cute that little gnome is going to be. And so we're going to use a lighter blue. It's got a little, it's a little teal looking. So we're just going to mix this up a little teal. And so for the teal, what I'm using is I'm using this vibrant blue, a little of this, and a little of the white, and I'm getting a pretty good little teal color here. So I'm going to paint her hat 
the gnome hat with this teal blue green color I always call it t-bird green or t-bird blue no t-bird green because it just reminds me of like an old 50s model t-bird or the, when they redid the t-birds oh, those are some good looking cars i want one of those so bad i think they're so pretty very very um What's the word I'm looking for? They're not very sensible, maybe is what I want to say. Because they're just two-seaters, aren't they? Two-seaters. Okay, there's a little teal blue. Her hair is going to be pink. And her dress is going to be rainbow. So let's go ahead and try a little of this dress okay we're going to start with yellow across the bottom i am not going to leave a gap between these i didn't like it that much so i'm just going to go from there they go put a little orange now it looks like candy corn I know I'm skipping red, but I don't care. I don't care. I've seen where, um, you've, you know how you've seen prisms, you know, when they hit the light, the crystals, and they just um, splash a prism all over the place. I did not know that you can get that same effect with a um with resin you can make a resin prism if that makes any sense you know what color i forgot on the other one purple how can you have a um rainbowy thing without purple how did i leave purple out How did I leave purple out? So uh, apparently one thing I need is to come up with better topics of conversation to talk about while I'm painting. Maybe I'll start telling ghost stories or something. Since everybody knows I like ghost stories, maybe I could just come up with a good ghost story and tell people. That's going to be my goal, to come up with better story to tell. Maybe ghost stories. I've seen where people do, you know, they'll put on makeup and they'll tell stories while they're doing their makeup. That's what I should do is like come up with some story while I'm painting like the people that um, tell ghost stories or whatever or true crime stories. I like true crime stuff, but I'm mostly like ghost stuff more than true crime. But hey. So one of the ghost stories I had was that we've heard Sassy's other dog mates dog friends or other dogs that have passed sweet pea was her mom she passed at oh gosh i guess it's been two years or a year and a half and then duncan's been two two years at christmas and um we we actually do hear them in the house um sassy's sister was named Lily and she died real young like she was six I think when she died and um, so we had four dogs at one time we had the mama the daddy and then two puppies and Sassy was one of the puppies and um, so we kept all of them because I mean how do you get rid of if we would had if we would have only had one dog or three dog puppies we could have you know place them but when you have two it was very hard to pick which one which one is the one we're going to keep and which one are we going to give away and um so anyway we um we kept both of them and um lily had addison's disease so she died actually i think i'm gonna paint this white first just to see if it'll make it more vibrant i'm gonna paint this 
and I'm gonna come over with the pink. So it's kind of off light pink right now just because I didn't change my brushes. But I just wanna see if it makes the pink, I think it'll make that pink seem more vibrant by painting it white first. So let's just go ahead and try that out. Anyway, um, so Lily had Addison's disease and so she died when she was six and it was a complete, um, I don't think she should have had to have died. I think it had some of her symptoms been diagnosed as Addison's symptoms and not just other symptoms, then she'd probably still be here. But anyway, that's just me. Um, I digress. But anyway, so when she passed, you know, we had other dogs still in the house. So it was very hard to tell if uh, a noise we heard was from a ghost dog or from a real dog, right? So we never really heard anything or thought we heard anything you know we just assumed if you hear a noise it's one of the live dogs right so then um sweet pete duncan died first he was 17 so he had a long happy life he did really good for himself and um so he had a good long life so um and so i'm also cut painting in white the um her hand right here and I'm going to paint this one white also just because it's going to be a light color. And I'm just curious to see if it if it makes it pop a little more. So that's why I'm doing that. Anyway, okay, so um, so back to the ghost story. So, okay, so I'm going to let that dry. And while this is dry, I'm going to paint these hearts up here white also just because I want to see if that helps make the color pop. Um, so anyway, Duncan dies and then... Six months later, let's see, he died in December. Sweet Pea died in June of the next year. So Sassy went from being one of four, you know, for six years she was one of four. And then after Lily died, she was um, one of three for six years. And then, um, or five years. And then now she's an, a lone, lone dog. She went from being one of three to one of um, one of one pretty quick. Okay, so I'm gonna let that dry. Um, let me hit this with the blaster real quick and then we'll, I'll finish talking. Okay, I did not paint the nose white, but we're just gonna go ahead and and try to paint it right now anyway so um okay so anyway back to the doggy ghost stories right so um we've heard duncan is the only one that wore the collar with the tags on it the puppies used to chew the tags so i took it off of them and then even as they got older i just never put the tags back on their their collars we just had them but we didn't put it on the collars because I mean it was crazy sweet pea though would chew the heck out of it so um it was very annoying so um so I just took them off so Duncan was the only well-behaved one in that aspect so he had the um he had his tags and the only one with tags on it so what we did was um so he was the only one with tags. So we started hearing, you know, like when a dog shakes and the tags on its collar jingle, we would hear that. But Sassy was the only dog in the house now, and she doesn't have tags. She does now, but she didn't have tags on her collar. So we would hear that shaking. And I mean, you know, let's think about it. What's it going to be? It's not, she doesn't have that on her collar. She's laying here asleep. What is that making that noise? And then my husband told me that one morning, we and Sassy were still upstairs. And um, also, always have like a towel nearby. So when you wash your brushes off, you can blot them so they won't be sopping wet when you put your paint, put it in the paint. Anyway, um, so um, I think this looks so much better painting it white first. So that's going to be the recommendation. Um, so my husband heard, heard the dog jump off of the bed. Wait, no, let me start over. So my husband heard one of the dogs coming down the stairs 
And he just assumed it was sassy because she and I were upstairs still kind of sleeping. And he went to open the gate to let her through the dog gate. And she wasn't there. Not only that, but right about then, he heard her jump off the bed upstairs. And so, as crazy as that is, the crazy part is, is that Sweet Pea, when she would come down the stairs, she was in heart failure, so she was getting really slow, and, I mean, she was 15, she was, you know, she, she had lived a nice long life, but, you know, still, you want your dogs to live forever, but, um, look how cute that is, look how stinking cute that hair is, so I'm gonna put a little white in here, just to kind of make some, and so I'm gonna do that in the little beard also. I'm going to show you what I'll do on the beard. So I'm going to put little lines right here. Oh, oh, that looks so stinky cute. Okay, so here's the little beard. It's still pretty wet. And so what I'm going to do is do a little bit of that, like right here. Isn't that cute? Okay. That's still getting paint all over me. Anyway, so... um. So Sweet Pea would come down the stairs, and it would be like she would go, step, down the stairs. She was very, very slow and meticulous about it, and um, that's how it sounded. It sounded like a dog coming down the stairs, slow, you know, taking her time, coming down the stairs. And then he said he even sounded like she, um, he heard the dog when it went from the stairs to the floor you know because we have a tile floor so from off of the wood off the wood stairs to the tile floor you know heard the nails hitting it and there was no dog there that's just crazy and um kind of freaked him out so we hear he's heard sweet pea and then when sweet pea was still alive they heard they think they heard lily uh sigh and it was me, Duncan, I guess, had already passed. Well, it could have been Duncan. I don't know. I don't know which which ghost dog is which ghost dog. But um, he heard a dog, heard something do with that, <sighs> like that. And even as old and as deaf as Sweet Pea was, she heard it too and sat up and looked. And, um, yeah, kind of crazy. Kind of crazy. So that's my ghost story. I guess I need to come up with some better, some good stories. Give me some ideas of stuff I can talk about. I guess I could give some art stories. Some art history stories. I did hear a podcast the other day talking about a lot of people... I mean, there's people that think that Van Gogh was actually murdered, that didn't he didn't um, shoot himself, that he actually was murdered by someone because he did make some comment about not blaming other people for his demise. And uh, that has a lot of art historians pondering what he meant by that. So, I don't know if anybody went and saw the Van Gogh exhibit. That was really fun. Went and saw that the other day. And um, we had a good time at that exhibit. I think I'm all out of whack with this rainbow. Oh, well. Oh, well. I did leave out purple, didn't I? Oh, well. I'm going to top it with green. And then, as you can see, it's a big mess right there, but I'm going to clean it up in a little bit. <clears throat> now, what color should her shoes be? Um, I think I'm going to do green. Because if I did yellow, they would, they, would get, they would get an argument with the yellow at the bottom of her skirt. Or her jumper, whatever gnomes wear. What do norm, gnomes wear? What do gnomes wear? Just big 
caftans. I don't know. And then the little bow in her hair um, as a nod to the birth of Venus, which is one of my favorite paintings. Um, as a nod to that, I'm going to do a light blue ribbon because the birth of Venus has a light blue ribbon. That's still really wet. That's still kind of wet. You do want to make very sure that your paint is dry before you start putting these on because number one it can bleed and number two it can ruin your marker and I just smeared some green right here Okay, and then when this dries, I'll be able to draw the lines through it. I think I might be able to do it. Let's see. Cute little glasses. How cute is this? This is coming out so stinking cute. So stinking cute. Okay, can I do this right here? Whoops, I think I got it in wet paint. Okay, looks really cute. I'm gonna put some loving up around the side. Now, so he, the, the uh, bearded one, I did pink. And so this one, I think I'm gonna do yellow. Let's see how bright I can get this yellow. Let's see how it looks. Cause I don't wanna have to paint this oh, a second time. So I'm just going to do dot, dot, line, dot, dot, line. You can do three dots. You can do, you know, line, line, dot, whatever you want. This is just what works for me. It just kind of seems something that I can do without really paying attention. I will admit for this edge, I am kind of doing it with my brush really loaded. And um, remember, you don't need it to be symmetrical. You don't need it to be um, clean, precise lines like they were drawn with the ruler. 
<coughs> you just want it to be whimsical and fun. <clears throat> whimsical and fun, whimsical and fun. So there's the little lines around that. I just think it really makes it pop. I'm going to paint the edges um, on this one also. I don't know what color. Maybe I'll do the edges yellow on this one. Or yellow green. I don't know. What you think? What you thinking? So here, the, here they are side by side. So we got the bearded gnome and the ponytailed gnome. And so all I have left to do on this was clean up the heart, draw the lines around the heart, maybe touch up a little bit right there because I got a little bit of the beard on the black outline. And then on this one, what I need to do is, um, I think I'm kind of done with this one. Um, so this one, I really would prefer it to look like that. I don't really like the white lines. That was just kind of something I was trying, and I don't really like it, so I'm not going to do it again, <laughs> basically. So um, let me draw the lines around this. Sorry, I got a... Get this a little closer to me. A little hand in the front because it's holding it okay so now he's outlined the hearts outlined so this is what it's gonna look like you can do love up the edges however you want um, we could even come back and put some highlights let's see let me do a little see this green how's this green look let's see so, I mean, I could actually come here and do just a little bit right there, you know, so I can come over here maybe with the uh, purple. Let's see how dark is the purple paint pen. So I could just do this. See how I put that purple on there? It's kind of hard to see. The yellow shows up pretty good. And so, I mean, at some point you could go, you could actually go all the way around it if you wanted. I like having just the simple around the edge, but I did say I would probably come back in with a little green on this yellow. So let's see how that's gonna. No, I said I'd do green on this pink. Let's see how this looks. Just a little bit of this green and see how it will look. I kind of like it, but I'm not doing the whole dot, dot. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of just like hugging one side of this pink, you know? Oh, this is so cute okay that is stinking cute so now what can I do over on the yellow one so let's pull out this one that's got the yellow this is still wet but what color do you think would look good with this yellow I mean um, I could do I mean I was gonna say purple but then that's kind of too LSU -y. so we've got the purple here we got the blue here so what is a good color that's not really being utilized um 
in this design. We got the purple, we got the pink, we got the, we've got the uh, blue. I'm sorry, I think I gotta go with the purple though. I still think I need purple. I know it's gonna be kind of LSU-y, but not that there's anything wrong with that. So see how it looks right here. I think that looks cute. Oh my gosh, this is so cute. So cute. I'm not making choices the right way tonight because I'm looking at how much paint I have left and I'm like, oh, let's do it with purple. I got a lot of purple left. It's not really the best way to make a decision, but... I mean, it really pops against that black background. Oh, so sweet. This is so adorable. So adorable. The green would look good with this yellow also. So, um, like I said, with this one, like I painted the edge here. So what I would do is I could come back with this painting. And see how I've got this edge that's painted blue. I can come into this. And just let's see put it where you can see it how cute is this So I do that on both sides, and then, let's see, how long will it take me? Let's do this real quick. Oh, you can't even see me doing it, sorry. Okay, and then this, I think I'm just going to put dots, like big polka dots. I'm done with the yellow. I keep holding it out of the way and you can't see me painting it. So I'm going to just do dot, dot, dot. It's not really a dot. Blob, blob, blob. So that's the edges. And here's the little known. How cute and adorable is this? So, like I said, this is going to be at Chiba Hut on Thursday the 9th of June. So you can register at createbr.com, register, grab you a spot, um, come out and have dinner and have a cocktail, whatever you want. And hopefully I'll see you guys soon. And um, if this is something you'd like to see at the studio, I am um, working on doing some seasonal gnomes that we can have a new gnome every season and do it as just kind of like a real quick little um, fun class for doing the gnomes. And um, anyway, thanks for coming, everybody. Good to see everybody, and hopefully I will see some of y'all Thursday. Bye.